Thank you. So this morning, then, we're going to be looking at the study of John. We're continuing our story um, looking at the, the study of John, 1 John. We're at a um, reminder of our key verse, which is, these things have been written so that you may believe. Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that believing, you may have life in his name. And the heart of John, we see, is found in John 3.16, the heart of the message of the gospel that John wants to encourage the church that he was writing to, is this aspect of love, the love of God, which is at the heart of his epistles as well. God is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And at the heart of all of our discipleship and our service, we have this as a foundation, God's love, God's will, that all people might hear and that they might believe the gospel. We're following the structure then um, of chapter one at the moment, introducing Jesus as God the Son. Um, there is an awful lot within chapter one, and we spent a few weeks already, and we're at verse seven pretty much today. Um, and we're going to be looking at that in some detail. Verse 6 is, There came a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light which, coming into the world, enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. So, there came a man sent from God. We have the idea of a human being, Anthropos, that has been sent, and we have in the Greek the apostello, the apostle, the idea of the one that is sent. And he's sent from God. So here we have John, the writer, writing about John, who we call the Baptist, who had been sent from God. And this is at the heart, then, of those people who are then serving the Lord as the Holy Spirit is filling us, our hearts, in each of our own ways. The Lord sends us in our various ways and various ministries of the Holy Spirit, our daily lives. We can look to John as an example of how the Lord leads. We who are called of the Lord Jesus are sent as the Holy Spirit leads us, whether this is in a domestic environment or going to other cultures. We're going to skip this. Life of Jesus and the Gospel of John can be found on the YouTube and you can see the story of how that is portrayed. We're going to skip that. So, then he, verse 7, he came as a witness he came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all who might believe through him. So when you were to think about the idea as a witness, we think automatically of the idea of somebody declaring, but also as a witness, if we consider the concept of the word witness, you also have this idea of a court, um, that somebody might testify um, to having seen something happen um, and to bear witness to an event to, in which to then to portray the information, the truth, to a jury, to a judge, so that something might happen. And we have within the Gospel of John um, an indication 
there um, is an underlying concept of a situation, of a, a legal system where you have John coming as a witness. And he's testifying about the light. So he's coming to bear forth to the people that, who hear him about the light. Now, he came to the Jewish people. He came to Israel um, that had rebelled and he was reaching out to Israel um, to, for them to be able to hear the gospel message um, that Jesus is the light so that all might believe through him. So John's taking the, the message that although it's one for specifically for Israel, John then takes that then and he's applying it to the church uh, about 90 years um, AD to then the, the church, to wipe the all might. And so it's a universal message. Although John the Baptist was preaching to Israel, John the writer is then talking about the whole of the world, whoever believes in him. The word witness then um, for John is this word materia. And the word materia, um, we get the idea of a martyr from. Um, and it means to testify. So you'll see then when in the verse you've got the idea of he came as a witness to testify in the Greek. They're the same word pretty much. We've got the idea um, he came, the martyr came to, um, to testify. Um, so to testify then um, is clearly the role within the Old Testament and the New Testament of somebody who is declaring the testimony of, as Revelation 19 says, the, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. To testify about Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And here we have John testifying, um, and here is one then, you notice here in the definition from the Blue Letter Bible of Materia, uh, in part two, it says, one who testifies, for example, that is, before a judge. And here we have this idea then developing um, in our hearts and our minds, we can see, that there's like this court case, and uh, that no one may be without an excuse that God as a judge is just and true when he then for, um, sends people either to hell and damnation or saves to heaven. The people have heard. And so it's a necessary process that God is just and that he provides the message that those who testify to declare to the jury, the people who are here, those people who are here, that they might then be saved. So he's coming to Israel and he's declaring to them the message. Um, the person of John the Baptist, when he was providing the message to the, uh, to the Pharisees and to the other Jewish people, uh, he was declaring and they were asking him, are you the one to come? Who are you? Are you the prophet? Are you Elijah? So there was lots of expectations at the time of John the Baptist um, of the one that was promised in the many prophecies about Jesus. And in Malachi chapter 3, we have a scripture where we can see the forerunner, John the Baptist, then supported this text. Behold, I am going to send my messenger and he will clear the way before me. And he was talking about how to make a, a clear way in the wilderness. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And here we have then, 400 or so years before Jesus was born, the declaration by the prophet Malachi that the messenger would be coming. And so there was great anticipation throughout Israel of the coming of this king. And the timing would have been found if the people had been following the scriptures carefully from Daniel 9, 27, that there was a particular time period, a countdown of the particular, for when the year of the Messiah would be cut off. And so you had faithful followers of the Lord, Hannah and Simeon, the, the people who were waiting for Jesus in the temple, who were willing to um, be excited at the reception of the baby, the salvation of Israel. So it was a, a huge anticipation in Israel about the, what was about to happen. 
they were under the oppression of the Romans, but there was huge anticipation that they would be released from that burden, that oppression of the Romans through the coming of the Messiah. And here we have John the Baptist then declaring, make way, bringing everybody from uh, Israel back to God. So what had happened is the Israel had hardened their heart as a nation against God. And many were practicing outward religion, but their hearts were far from him. And so the back to the, um, John the Baptist came, repent, meaning you, Israel, need to come back to God. Why? Particularly because under the old covenant, the rebellion against God had caused God to then bring the curses of the covenant upon Israel. And therefore, the curses would then bring to judgment. And in order to get away from that judgment, they needed to repent as a nation that come under those curses. The Shekinah glory, Ezekiel says, the Shekinah glory had departed from the temple when they went into captivity. And so we have also, when John's writing this gospel, a case where the church has pretty much, in many areas, we see this in um, Revelation, when he talks to the church, he writes to the churches, how many of the churches have hardened their hearts and they needed to repent. There's lots of talk these days in the churches that about salvation, there shouldn't be repentance. Um, the, the, the sense of changing your mind or change your heart is very important in the scriptures. And for people to say you, that you shouldn't repent, to change your mind, change your heart and your attitude to God is quite dangerous in the undermining of the gospel because the devil believes and doesn't follow. It's good and important as far as doctrine is right to believe you are saved through believing, but there also has to be that your heart and your mind must then trust and follow. And that means sometimes that you need to change the way that you think about your life and about your attitudes in order to follow him faithfully and truthfully. And so Malachi shows that really John the Baptist has come to prepare a way. And so in our hearts, we need also to be clear in our hearts that we're not hardened in some areas. It's so easy in this modern day to be hardened in various different ways and be seduced by the ease of Christianity in Britain, in the UK, in the West. So we have also then uh, from Isaiah, the people who walk in darkness, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah says, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the sun will shine on them. Here we have the development um, of fulfillment of prophecy. The Lord Jesus is declared by John as the light. The people have been in darkness, even though they had the Old Testament. We're talking about Naphtali, the land in the north of the Sea of Galilee. Um, these people were out near the Gentiles, the non-Jewish community up in the north. He said they will see a great light. And Jesus grew up there in Capernaum. Um, and we have this then development of this. Notice before we talked about how uh, in the temple, he will come to the temple. And then John talks about the light from Malachi, the temple, where we got the, uh, John using this idea in the reference to John, the light. And of course, there's a link to the temple and the menorah. And here we have a picture of the seven-branched candelabra, the menorah that was given to Moses to place within the tabernacle. A symbol, all of the various articles within the tabernacle are symbolic. And Jesus being the light, and of course in the temple as well, will be the candelabra being the light. What does that mean? Jesus was accused um, very angry with the Pharisees when he said that if you destroy this temple I will rebuild it in three days and later the disciples after the resurrection understood that he meant his body and here we have the darkness and the temple and Jesus talked about his body being the temple and we can learn from that that our bodies are a place where the Holy Spirit wants to dwell and we have the idea that Jesus is the light and the oil is the Holy Spirit. And those, the Bible says, whoever believes on Jesus will 
have Christ in them, the hope of glory. And you have, well, because of the blood cleansing us from sin, the Holy Spirit then fills us. And we're called to be filled continually, daily, moment by moment, be by reflection and waiting on the Lord, seeking his face and through praise and worship daily, we're then saturated in the Lord Jesus. Paul says, don't be drunk with alcohol, but be filled with the Spirit, singing songs, um, spiritual songs and psalms and hymns. And so this importance of the light, we have the light within us, and Jesus came as the light, being filled with the Holy Spirit uh, on his 30th year. He then did three years of ministry, uh, in order to then share and do that which is according to the scriptures, fulfilling prophecy. And so the light shone in the world for three years, three and a half years. And then we can see the transformation, looking at the world. This poor man from, from uh, Capernaum, a carpenter, has transformed the world that we live in. Human beings, we seem to be insignificant and we think, what can we do? But each one of us, when we hand our bodies over to the Lord as living sacrifices, the Lord then fills us with his spirit and he can do his will, which is above and beyond our wildest dreams or under our understanding. If we allow the Lord to lead us and we wait on him and we trust him, we put everything else aside, all of our will and all our, of our desires are placed to one side, we sacrifice them, and we let the Lord use us in this short period of time of our lives, the Lord can do wonders. And it's about allowing him and trusting him and growing in faith as a child, walking with him. We as a church are just starting, but we know as the Lord leads, he can do his will. And where there's his will, then we don't know what he can do. But we know that he can do wonders as we trust him and look to him according to his will. Likewise in our lives. So we are called as light. So we are in Bournemouth here. Wherever we are in the world, wherever we're sent, we will be a light naturally. The Lord will provide for us where he calls, he provides and provide a light. So John was in a very difficult situation in Israel, and he was faithful. He was acting as that witness. He was declaring to all of the people of Israel, and many of the Pharisees were very suspicious of him, and they came questioning him like they did to Jesus, questioning Jesus. Some people, like John and his brother James and then Andrew and others were followers and disciples of John the Baptist and were pointed in the right direction towards Jesus. He said, I must become lesser, he must become greater. And this is the important aspect in ministry. As we are blessed in ministry, as we're blessed in service, we must decrease, he must increase. And it's a, a very important aspect that the Lord Jesus at all times is receiving the glory, the honour and the praise and not the vessel. The vessel is only the vessel and is useless without the power. The power is Jesus. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the Lord, and he is the one that receives the glory at all times. So the point is that all people might believe through him. So this concept of the light goes right the way back to the beginning um, and helps us to understand where John is very much referring all the ways the way back to the beginning of the message in the Torah, when Moses is teaching, and he picks up the theme of the light, that the light is good, and we have this idea of a moral universe. We have the idea that God saw that light was good, and God separates light from darkness. Paul, uh, John talked about how Jesus separates the wheat from the chaff. Wherever we share the gospel, when the, the gospel is shared, like that jury, some will receive, some will reject. And God is in a process of separating people on earth. As the gospel goes out, some people will receive, some people will reject. We talk about predestination, but it's clear in the scriptures there is always choice because God is just. There is freedom of choice, but God also chooses. And that is a mystery. 
which we'll only know when we're with the Lord. But as far as we're concerned, we are all impo it's important for us to be able to be faithful in ministry of sharing the light. Do not hide your light under the table, but place it on the table to be clear. Always a clear testimony and not to be shy or hide away from the fact. We must be clear. And when we're clear, the Lord will then allow those people who are called, who he has chosen to receive the message, they will receive it and they will be able to go on. And that's an important thing. Even though that you're persecuted, even though that you're rejected, even though that you're hurt, because of that, even though it's family members or friends, it could be very painful. The Lord loves you and will support you in your ministry of service to him and your rewards are in heaven, not on earth. Every time you're rejected, he said, you will be receiving your just rewards like as the prophets. So, light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So, as we receive the Lord, Paul's encouraging, this light shall shine out um, to give glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Light shall shine out of darkness. So, the Lord has shone in our hearts. He's brought us together um, to encourage us. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. And we've gone full circle back to this idea of believing and trusting. Um, and this is right and important, that we don't, as you grow in the Lord Jesus, there's a simple foundation, the cornerstone, the Lord Jesus. Um, as we grow in our understanding of doctrine and teaching, we have to keep, keep firmly fixed with the Lord Jesus in our hearts and not move away. And this is a simple gospel. Jesus said, my burden is light. It's easy. His yoke is easy. We have to be faithful to this simple message. Jesus is Lord. He died on the cross from our sins, for our sins, and he rose again on the third day. We hold true to that. That's our message. We ask people to repent from all of the sins. We ask people to believe and trust in Jesus to be saved and therefore we stick to that and we declare that message. We lift up the name of Jesus and he says as the snake on the cross was lifted up, on the post was lifted up, so as Jesus is lifted up, whoever beholds him, there will be a drawing unto him. People will be drawn to him as we're faithful in the theme. At the end of the Bible, Revelation declares then that our home will be with the light. The Lord will be our light in heaven. The beautiful thing about being a follower of Jesus is security. We're not going to be judged according to works. The Bible says Jesus has paid the price once and for all for our sin. We never have to worry about punishment or judgment for sin. As a faithful follower of Jesus, we are secure, and as secure as any security. You cannot get more secure for eternity. That's security. But the Lord does declare that there are rewards for those people who are faithful in following him. So that's a different kind of judgment. You're judged according to rewards at the beam are thrown for those who run a race how well you're going to be rewarded. And so it sets us free from anxiety. It sets us free from being driven. It sets us free from worry. Trust the Lord, rest in him, allow him to work through us and know that we have eternal life, not tomorrow or when we die, but now. Eternal life is today. Heaven is yours as a believer today. And as we walk in that joy of the Lord, with that perspective, we can then go as the early disciples, so many of them died because of their faith, they knew we're living in the light of the resurrection. And this is our home, heaven, our anchor, our hope. That's where we're going. That's where we will spend eternity. The Lord Jesus is our light. We bear witnessing to the light, knowing that we will be with him, the light for eternity. This is the message we have received and announce to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. 
But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship on with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, and that's the important part, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We say we've not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. John came as a witness. Today, we can read about him, and he clearly was a very strong and faithful witness to the end, being martyred, ultimately having his head chopped off. But we know we will see him in glory. We will see him in the kingdom. As he's established the kingdom, when Jesus returns, he will be resurrected, and we will be enjoying his fellowship for a thousand years in the millennial reign as Jesus reigns as king over Israel, that all may believe through him John has done his job. We've got our job to do. May the Lord make us faithful and true as John was a faithful and true witness. Let's sing now. Lord, the light of your love. Shine, Jesus, shine. Mm -hmm. 